Um, uh, this would be the last one for the day. So I wanted to cover uh, some other important things that, uh, that I'm aware of. So the first thing I wanted to share is a plug-in, a plug for my clan mother, which is Karen Ann Luke McDonald. She is also White Bear Clan. She's a clan mother, clan mother 13. Uh, she's on Facebook, Karen Ann Luke McDonald. She's also on Project Incension on YouTube. And she uses what's called a, uh, an app. It's a program. It's a software app called Genius, G-E-N-I-U-S, uh, Insight. Genius Insight Health App. You can get it for a free trial and use it for 15 days. Uh, and there are courses through Genius Insight that are free of charge to show you how to use it. I have it on my phone, but I don't use it. I use it once, and it, what it does is it <clears throat> takes a voice print of your core frequency identity, and then it and then it's able to see. Essentially, all of those things that are within your field, your electrical field, your electromagnetic field, okay, of all the frequencies, through all the chakras, all the meridians, of those things that we've been exposed to. Remember, input, output, it's a result of toxic exposure, toxic discharge, which is data input, and metadata output. So what it does is it measures all the data input and the data output, and it will examine all the frequencies that we're holding in the field through the voice print, and then it will give you a readout of those things that need to be adjusted, or if you will, retuned, okay? And, uh, and Karen will give, uh, which, how do I put this? Uh, you get a hold of her, she can set up a time, and, and you can work with her, and she'll clear the field, help you to use the app to clear the field. And um, it's an amazing device. It, it works, okay? I was with another girl, Misha, uh, on the island of the Big Island, actually, and I hooked her up with Karen, and Karen helped her. She realized, hey, you're running 300 megahertz. We need to get it up. Anything below 250 megahertz, which is 250 million oscillating cycles per second of electromagnetic energy, and your food for the archons. They hang out on the ley lines, and they feed on anything that's less than 250. So these are parasites, okay? And, of course, this naturally tears into what we call parasitic consciousness. What is parasitic consciousness? It means that we're going in reverse because we're running, if you will, a program things that are in our unconscious memory that are essentially habits, how we react to stimulus. So we realize that there are things we hold in memory that we want to do, we continue to do. I eat the same potato chips. I eat the same hamburgers. I go to the same places. Everything that I do is the same. Okay? That's a program. That's a Xerox machine. Which simply means how many things do you do throughout the course of the day that are essentially the same routine? It doesn't change or alter one iota. You know, there might be a little different change to hear, oh, I went to the park today and I didn't go yesterday. Okay? What we're really talking about here is how much of our conscious creative mind, our conscious creative imagination, are we using to experience every moment? If we're in now time, we're always in conscious creative mind. We're not running on memory. We're not running on a program. We're manifesting using our conscious creative mind. And that means that because we have no memory, that means we're running at a very high speed. Because the speed of what we experience in our conscious creative mind is so fast. One frame after another. You're manifesting at an incredible speed. So when you're with others that are running high-speed consciousness with you, then your imagination is unlimited. Everything is made possible. But there are rules to manifestation about the energy that we use to do it with. Okay? 
That's why the cosmos is a genius. It realizes, because we realize, the faster we're going in speed, the more that we're using that energy in ways that serve us. Which means we're not doing things that represent what? Losing light. And the reason we don't lose light and attract more electrons is because we're giving them away to go faster. That allows us to not be held captive to lower density speed. We're giving away all our energy like that sun does up there. Okay? That's an energy service provider. A light warrior is an energy service provider because the spiritual light body in which it's attracting so many electrons at such a high rate of speed, that's an enormous amount of heat. That's a lot of fire. And that's why you see a blue sky. That's why you see in the auric energy field of a light warrior, indigo. If you see a picture of planet Earth from a space cam like Soho, you'll see that the girl's light bulb, which is the planet ship, is white light. Consciousness is producing what we experience. So that's why service to self, which means you're a parasite because you're going in reverse because instead of giving away electrons, you are accumulating more electrons and storing it instead of giving it away. Like the previous lesson, you get all my stuff. That's why my mother, remember, couldn't figure out why am I giving away all my density? Because I'm not low density consciousness. I'm not the physical body. I'm a spirit, a living spirit that is in the body. My state of consciousness, okay, is not what the body is. I'm using the body as a communication platform vehicle in third density to help others navigate, to get to the higher density consciousness fields in which you are free to experience what it is you create and thus manifest in real time, which is now time, which means no future no past, only right now. You outran the rabbit with the clock. Okay? That's going to be the most difficult challenge for people that are still holding energy captive. Okay? That translates into what I said about Tucker Carlson. They want to feed on others' light because they can't generate any of their own electrons that they're attracting and thus automatically giving it away. That means that they're running a powerful transformer, a powerful electrical substation. You get all my light, you get all my love, you get all my compassion, you get all my empathy. I care about you because I'm restoring my cosmos. We're losing light. we got to restore the light. So the more electrons you're attracting and giving away, you are restoring the light in the classroom. <clears throat> That's why it's a classroom. Graduation is a simple pass or fail. Students either learned how to give electrons away to attract more, to power the light, or they didn't learn within a given period of time. 
class was dismissed in 2013. So a lot have already gone home to their particular star system or density dimensional realm. So we're native here, so we understand this is a classroom. So I'm staying to try and help keep the lights on so that we can help restore as many batteries, which represents an energy storage device in which you are able to attract and thus give away electrons at a high rate of speed, like a diode and a vacuum tube. Remember the old TV sets? Remember we used vacuum tubes in TV sets to communicate signals? And I told my father in the 50s, that television set is trying to program me with a signal communication that is lower density consciousness than I am that is driving it. I don't want to get into droning operations, which has to do with essentially controlling the consciousness of another unit, which is an MK Ultra unit of consciousness, to get it to do things that it's not aware of why it's doing things, because the state of consciousness, which represents the algorithms, which are the thought form patterns in which it does what those thought form patterns are saying this to go do, which means it doesn't know the difference between it, what it is and what that is. That was the challenge when you were a child coming in here is to know the difference between what's true and what's not true. And how do you know that? By knowing your original identity. What is our original identity? I am what love is in living spirit. I live in the light of what love is so I can keep attracting more electrons and go on forever. When you've learned how to do that in living spirit, you learn through the goddess in the classroom how to do that with her energy. And it's her spirit and her energy that is in this biosphere. She's the teacher in this classroom. So the tribes and the clans are native to this realm. If you want to look at, for example, and go into the history of how this order, how this uh, sort of came about, uh, there's a couple of sources that I would recommend. One is, is there is on the YouTube channel, I believe it's called The Galactic History uh, of Planet Earth with Patty Broussard and a guy by the name of Aug Tellez, A-U-G-T-E-L-L-E-Z. This was almost a nine-hour discussion between the commander of the Earth Defense Forces and Aug Tellez, who worked that out of a my lab which is a military ET industrial lab downstairs, subterranean. And they had a fascinating discussion that goes into the deeper science of a lot of what the cabal, the demonic stuff was doing. Uh, you'll learn a wealth of knowledge between someone who came out of those programs of what the cabal, the New World Order, if you will, were doing. And, of course, you get a conversation from Patty's Inn. That's an enormous wealth of information. Karen McDonald is in that discussion. And then, of course, you have um, the six, what are known as the six aboriginal treaties. Uh, Noah's Ark was not a boat. Noah's Ark is a treaty of the America's empire, which is North America, which are peace treaties among the star nations that represents the tribes and the clans. And you have six aboriginal treaties that represent the clans and the tribes on planet Earth that are native to this realm. And then you had what was called the white races. The white races represented essentially the Anunnaki and the Draco, the Alpha Draconis. That's your Vatican. Those are your monarchs. Those are your castles. Those are your masons. Okay? They are not native to this realm. Simple blood test will indicate that. That would be your Rothschild family. That would be your Pope. That would be your Cardinals, okay? That would be represented by the Catholic Church, okay? They're the ones that set up the religions here, okay? For a number of different reasons, one of which was control. Religion became a control mechanism. 
Now, this is not to say because I grew up in a Christian home that there isn't a lot of truth in the Bible. There is. What the words represent and how we use our energy to, how do I put this? It's sort of like, remember how we are pass or fail? Are we attracting more electrons? Are we in love and service to others to attract more light? Thus, we grow our larger spiritual energy body, right? A lot of that information is held within the Bible if you can read through the language of what it's trying to communicate, which is called the language of the heart, okay? So what happens is, is you have, for instance, in the Old Testament, what is known as a fear-based God. That's false. Let there be light means let there be love. That's how they mix truth and fiction, okay? Fear of what the light is, yet let there be light. Translate that as a conundrum. That's a contradiction in terms. So you have, for example, Jesus in the New Testament is a single unit of consciousness, just as I am a single unit of consciousness. I live through my heart, which is what love is in living spirit. So I know that the creation energy upon which I use through love to manifest what I experience is creation energy. When you learn through doing that, you learn how it works. You learn how let there be light works. You learn how energy works to create what you experience. That becomes your teacher. That's how you know the difference between who you are and what you're not. You're not held captive by somebody else's belief system. You're living the truth through knowing how energy works in the cosmos to travel through all the density dimensional consciousness, which would be a 12 stargate system. I don't have the graphic to show you, but it is through the, your heart that opens them up because that vortex has access to all that light. We are aware of all the gates. The spirit can move through because the spirit that is in the light has so much fire in its furnace to run the hottest light house. That's how it works. I know that because I live that, and I learned that through a goddess. She's a more powerful lighthouse. That's why she's a teacher in a classroom in the Milky Way galaxy. So I thought I'd leave that for the day and say goodbye and have a great day. And um, if you're able to live through your heart with the most powerful vortex, you'd be surprised how fast you can spin that light, which raises the state of awareness, which allows you, us to be free to create and imagine whatever's possible. Anyway, bye for now. I love you all.